Today we're going to be checking out the Maverick Quantum R Flux. This is an RC I've had my eye on for a little while because I think it's going to be ideal for a project that I've been planning to do. I'm looking to build an outdoor drifter, something I can do some drifts with, some trick shots with, that I can handle rough ground and is better suited to outdoors than the other RCs that I have. So today we're going to get out the box, see what's included, then we're going to take it out and do some testing, see how it drifts in standard form and see how quick it is too. So inside the box it's pretty much as you'd expect, you get your instruction guide and you also get a guarantee included. There's also this supercharger which you can add to the hood, I think I'm going to be leaving that off for now though. Controllers are normally one of the first things I change out on an RC, but this one actually looks pretty good and it does everything I need for now, so I think I'll be sticking with it for a bit before I look for an upgrade in the future. I went for the solid grey colour scheme, but there is a few different options available with this RC, but I'm really happy with my choice, I think it looks great in the grey and much better in real life than on photos. I also picked up a clear body shell and if you follow my channel I'm pretty sure you can guess which colour this is going to go. It's 8th scale, brushless and 4S powered, so it should have plenty of power for what I need. It comes with these really nice oil filled adjustable shocks and some grippy Treads Vortex belted tyres. The chassis looks great with the moulded front splitter and rear diffuser and the electronics are impressive too with a 120 amp brushless ESC and motor combo. I went for the optional plasma lipo from HPI which fits perfectly in the battery tray. But there's plenty of room there so I'm sure you'll be fine with most 2S to 4S batteries. The car comes with a metal geared servo which seems pretty smooth and pretty responsive from the factory so I think that should be a good place to start. It also seems to have plenty of power so let's get it outside and give it a test. Unfortunately I live in the north of England and where I live it does rain a lot so when I got to the test site it was soaking wet and the ground was really slippy so I did give the car a couple of runs up and down and try and get up some speed but it really was just like driving on ice and that's not the car's fault it's just the weather conditions. So after driving backwards and forwards a little bit and continuing to spin out I decided instead of doing speed runs let's do a little bit of drifting. Now this car's bigger and more powerful than the drift cars I'm used to driving but after maybe 5 or 10 minutes I was starting to get the hang of it and I was able to do some nice controlled drifts. I then decided to try and get some close to camera drift shots where I was splashing a bit of water up. First shot I hit the camera, second shot I span out and ended up in a puddle. So I decided to move indoors and see how it drifts on dry ground. On dry ground it did need a bit more power to get it spinning but after a while I was able to do some controlled corners. Also some drift tapping if I can. So after that I thought right let's move on to something a bit more tricky. I decided to try and hit a cone. Now this took a while to get right so bear with it. On this shot I hit it but I knocked the camera over so I had to have another go. I was really pleased with how the trick shots had gone so I headed back outside and it had started to dry up so I thought perfect opportunity to try and do some speed runs. I was told the truck would do about 80 kilometers an hour but given it was where I wasn't expecting that full speed I did manage to pin the throttle a couple of times but it was still drifting and sliding around a little bit as you can probably see on the video. It managed to do 75 kilometers an hour which was pretty close to what I was expecting so I was happy with that given the weather conditions and I should have stopped there but decided to go back out and see if I could get to 80 which unfortunately didn't end well at all. But I was actually really lucky and the truck only picked up a couple of small scratches. So overall I've been really impressed with this RC and it's something that I think is going to be a great candidate for the outdoor drift project I've got in mind. So I'm going to start doing some modifications to it to try and make it drift even better so I can do some even more precise and impressive trick shots. If that's the kind of thing that interests you make sure you hit subscribe. It's also my first ever YouTube video so I'd really appreciate some feedback in the comments.